In this video, we are gonna take a look at the new features in Photoshop 2021, mainly for photographers. I'm not gonna cover the non-photography features, although show you where you can find out more in the end. So this is mid-October of 2020. It's Adobe Max Week. They always release new features for all their programs and uh, Photoshop is definitely one of them. So by the way, if you are attending the free virtual conference, Adobe Max, I've got a class this week. So uh, there's already thousands of people signed up, but there is no cap. So you can get in there and uh, check out my class. And, uh, and also I'll be in the chat room and answering questions. So feel free to swing in and say hi. All right, let's go ahead and get started with the new features. First things first, when you're doing your update, uh, just make sure you are updating the right version. So you don't want to you don't want to continue to update version 21. Okay, version 21 of Photoshop is is last year's version. Okay, the new version is version 22. It's called Photoshop 2021. I know it's it's a little bit weird, um, but it's called. Photoshop 2021, but behind the scenes, this is the 22nd iteration of Photoshop, okay? So you wanna continue when you're using your updater to continue to update version 22. Um, you can get rid of version 21. Don't, don't go, don't use it anymore. Delete it from your computer. You delete it just like you delete any other file, go into the folder, get rid of it, but um, you, you don't need that version anymore, okay? First things first, we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna jump in here, uh, some selection stuff. So I've got a couple of examples for you. Number one, I picked, I picked something with not quite a perfect background. And you have to understand if you don't have, if you didn't think about hair selection before you took the shot, you should not expect to get perfect hair selection in Photoshop after the shot or in any program for that matter, okay? If you didn't think about it before, you shouldn't expect perfection after. Now we can get close. So I picked something that's a little bit off dark hair with a darker background. So check this out. What we can do here is we can go up here to the select menu. Uh, select subject is, has been improved many times over the last couple of years. So that's always the place that I tend to start now, but we always have to follow that up with going up here to the select and mask dialog box. So when this opens up, First thing I'm gonna do here is just change my view. I'm gonna change it to on black, or uh, you can do either one. I'll do it to on black for, for this example here, just to help separate, not to take the business of that background away. And I'm gonna crank my opacity up just to give it a solid background. Well, one of the first new things that we have is a button up at the top called refine hair. So remember, this was what Photoshop gave us by default going in. All we did was select subject and went in here. Now I'm gonna click on refine hair and you can see it makes a really good change. So it goes in there and it refines that hair. I still follow it up with my refine brush tool, but this is where two new features come in. When you look over on the right hand side, you're gonna see refine mode. And now sometimes these areas might be collapsed. You just have to expand them. You're gonna see two things, color aware and object aware. Now, like many things in Photoshop, I, I'm gonna help try to help you try to understand what they do. At the same time, I'm gonna tell you my real world experience with some of these things is I try them both because you very rarely have a situation where color and object are just differing in, in totally, where it's only color or it's only an object. Usually it's some combination of both, but give them both a try. So before you even use this brush, or even, even after use it, does, there's really no perfect workflow to it. But I always choose, I'll choose color aware, and then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna brush around the edge of the hair, okay? So that's color aware. Now I'm gonna go over here to object aware, and that's gonna change it a little bit. Color aware is favoring any color differences between what it thinks the subject is in the background, Object aware is looking more for contrast between the subject and the background. But again, very rarely will you have a situation where the two of those don't mix. I think a lot of times they can mix. And I think that's why it's important just to understand a little bit about what they do and understand to use your brush to refine the edge like we always do, and then click between the two to see which one you get a better selection with. Now, I'm gonna cancel out of here because I set this up earlier and I'm gonna to go to my layer comps panel. Um, I set this up earlier because I wanted to, to bounce through a couple of different options. So this is Photoshop 2020's selection. I did this before I upgraded, 
okay? So I did a selection and you could see it's not bad. Um, I used select, select and mask, and then I used the refine brush on the hair. Not bad, but it's it's got a little bit of a glow to it. We've brought some of the outside edges here. So I'm gonna just move through. That's the refine hair option that I just showed you. This is without refine hair. Okay, this is just object aware. And then this is color aware. So slight differences between those two. Nothing, nothing too crazy on this photo, but definitely a better difference than Photoshop 2020s. And to me, refine hair takes the cake with, with all of them. It's just, you know, once you, you have a tool specific for hair, I think it helps out quite a bit. So uh, slight differences in those two. Again, object and color, I would say, I, I can't tell you one's gonna be better than the other. It's gonna be one of those things to experiment. Definitely better than 2020. And don't forget, if you are working with hair or fur, you'll wanna use that refine hair button. Now, just to, to kind of hit this point home, let's go to select subject like we did before. And let's go to select and mask. And I just wanna show you a little bit more here. Number one, I'm gonna choose refine hair just to show you what it does. We've zoomed in quite a bit. I mean, it's a big change. But color aware, I know on the original photo, I know there was a lot of green at the top of the monkey's head here, okay? So I'm gonna take my refined edge brush and I'm just gonna paint, all right? And it's gonna do a pretty good job, might even do a good job of, of working over here a little bit. That's color aware. I'm gonna switch it to object aware. And what you're gonna see is that sometimes it gets a little bit more, number, number one, the selection got a little worse in some areas, better in some areas, right? You can see that. But just to show you, color aware is bringing in some of that green background. Object aware is looking more at the contrast of what it thinks the subject is and its background, and it's making a choice between the two. So you're definitely gonna get on certain photos pretty different results between those two. Okay, moving on to the next one, sky replacements. Now, this is a big feature, so big that it first requires me to take a quick moment from our sponsor, which is always me, and tell you about my Photoshop system big course. So if you've never seen this course before, it was completely re-recorded this year um, in the latest version of Photoshop. And what I'm offering uh, this week is if you purchase the course, I'm actually gonna give you a year of updates. So that way, if Photoshop gets updated, number one, you get training on it. Number two, you don't have to worry about your training system getting outdated, but this is my big capstone Photoshop course. Everything about camera raw, the basics, uh, it's really meant for a beginner to a late beginner, early intermediate type person. It's got a whole, it's got hours on layers. It's got an hour on selections, retouching, a whole hour on removing distractions, resolution, image size, all that fun stuff. Um, you get to watch it online or you get to download it. You can do both. So uh, you can swing by the website and find out a little bit more about that if you're interested. Um, but again, you will, this week, you will get a year of free updates. So um, if Photoshop does get updated, you don't have to worry about, you know, whatever training course you bought being outdated. Okay, uh, let's head back over to replacing Sky. So, you know, the people are gonna come out, all the, all the purists are gonna come out of the woodwork. This is horrible, everybody's photos are gonna look the same. I get it. It's still pretty cool. So, got an image open here. Uh, we've got a Sky that's a little bit blah. So, and, and by the way, I'm gonna, this isn't just a Sky replacement because I know what's gonna happen. I'm, I'm, I'm not even gonna tell you because I know what everybody's gonna say when I do this. So, let's go to edit. Let's go down here to Sky replacement. I'm gonna pop open the sky replacement dialog box here. And at the very, very top, you can go in here and you can see there's a, a whole bunch of folders inside here. So we've got blue skies, we've got spectacular skies, we've got sunsets, all these different things in here. So lots of, lots of choices for you. And then you can even go in here and you can add your own skies. So you can make a, a photo, you can save it as a, a sky, and you can go in there and you can create your own libraries. You can see you can separate these into folders and make your own skies. So that's cool too. So that way, again, to, to go to ever, what everybody's gonna say is, is everybody's photo's gonna look the same. It doesn't have to look the same because now you can use your own skies. But I went in here, I chose one, I think from Spectacular. So I chose that one. So, I mean, guys, this is without, I didn't make a selection. I didn't do anything. That's before, that's after. 
that's pretty darn cool, okay? Um, and, and that's the hardest part about sky replacement is finding a sky that matches your 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 foreground. You know, all too often I see people take, this is a post, this is a twilight hour shot. The sun is pretty much down, or if not, it's, it's gone down for the most part. This is kind of blue hour, lots of pinks and magentas and blues. So for me to take a sky like a gray sky and put it in there, that's never really going to look right, okay? Even if it did show up on my image. Oh, I've got preview off. There we go. So that's never going to quite look right. And then, you know, a blue sky from a nice, bright, sunny day. Again, never really going to look right. So you've got to pick the right time of day. That's finding the sky is the biggest battle. From there, once we find the sky, you can shift your edge in and out if you find you're getting a little bit of glow around trees, which I don't find I'm getting here. Um, you can go over here, you can fade the edge. Again, if you see that your edge along your sky replacement, especially along trees, uh, you can fade that edge and help it blend in. You can change the brightness and overall darkness of the sky. So I might make that a little bit, a little bit brighter there. And then you can cool it and warm it, which is going to be essential to all sky replacements because you're, you're taking two different images that don't match in color tone and you might have to add some blue. You might have to go in there and add a little bit of warmth to it. Okay. You can even scale the sky and you can flip it. Now I know the sun is going down on the left-hand side here. So I can tell that the highlights of these clouds are on the left. So this is a good orientation for the sky, but you can flip it to the other side. Again, I just know that that's, that's not going to quite look right for the photo here. And then you've even got some foreground adjustments. You can do lighting and color adjustments to the foreground and, uh, and then decide how you're going to output this. Okay. At the very, very bottom, you could output it to a duplicate layer or just new layers. I'm going to choose the new layers option. Come over here and click. Okay. And it's going to create a whole new folder of sky replacement for me. This is why this is really important because it keeps my document fully editable meaning I can go in here and I can adjust all these different things. And here's where this comes into play. Cause right now there's a lot of people screaming at their computer saying, but you didn't do the lake. You didn't do the reflection. Okay. Well, I've got a layer with my sky on it, which is key to all of this. So what I can do is I can make a duplicate copy of our sky layer. So I'm going to press command or control J make a copy. Okay. I don't need this layer mask anymore because it's not going to work. So I'm just going to drag it to the trash can and hit delete. And then finally, I just need to flip the sky because we want to use it for the reflection. So we go in here and we transform flip vertical and then just move it down. So it's going to appear toward the bottom of the photo. Okay. Now we just need to make a selection. So let's hide this for a second. Let's go back to our background layer. I'm going to take my quick selection tool, which is where I would normally get started with a sky selection because sky replacement's not going to take care of this and then go to select and mask. Just like we've always done, I'm going to use that second brush from the left hand side over here. So it's that refined brush tool. And I'm just going to paint along the trees and it's going to do a really good job of bringing in all of that tree detail like so. All right. And once I get that going, we just click okay. Now we have a selection. Now, well, you know what? I missed the spot. Let's go back in here. There we go. There we go. Okay. Now all I have to do is go back to my sky layer and hit the add layer mask icon. And now I've got my sky down over the water. And because it's a layer, I can adjust the opacity and do whatever I need to do to make that sky blend in a little bit better with the, the water and I can even move it. So if the, if the, you know, it's not quite in the right place, I can move, I can scale, I can transform it. I can do whatever I need to, to get that sky to fit in. So pretty cool stuff there. Um, let's see here, select sky. This is one that snuck by. I haven't seen a lot of people talking about it, but as a landscape photographer, I'm actually probably more excited about this than I am replace sky. I don't replace my skies quite as much. Um, I'm not opposed to it. It's just, it's a very difficult thing to, once you get past the technicals creatively, it's hard to make it look good, but I work on the skies all the time. So now if you go to the select menu, you can go down here to sky and it will make a selection of your sky. Now you could do whatever you would normally do to it in Photoshop because you've already got the selection. So I could go to adjustments. I could go to brightness and contrast, maybe make my sky a little bit darker, make it a little bit contrastier. 
uh, add some saturation to it, whatever that would be, whatever you'd normally be doing to a sky. Now you've got a dedicated tool to make a selection of that sky for you. All righty. And, uh, and the last thing we're going to talk about here. So this one, this is, uh, this is some pretty interesting stuff. Um, you go over here to the filter menu and you're going to see this new thing called neural filters. So go under here to filter neural filters. It's going to open up a whole new section for you. Essentially, most of these are cloud-based filters. Okay. What I mean by that is they, they tend to, to run up in the cloud. So um, I'm not going to do skin smoothing. Let's go turn on the first section here, style transfer, and I'm going to turn it on. And then look over here on the, the, the right-hand side. You've got all these different styles. And you can click on show more, and you'll see a whole bunch of styles. So this is a texture blending image that I made, but you can add all these different painterly things to it, just patterns, colors, all kinds of stuff too. So some are weird. Some could be cool. There's a whole bunch of settings down here. I'm not going to go through each one because there are so many of them in here. I just want to call your attention to it as, as an area to go in here and play with. Okay. So that's one thing. Where do I see this going? I see this going to you being able to upload your own photo that's got a certain style to it. And then you being able to take another photo and say, hey, match that style. All right. I see, I see it going there. It's not quite there yet. There's, you really defaulted to these, but I could see it going there. So that's one. And then you can click the little, uh, the little beta filters icon over here. And there's so many different ones in here. Again, I just want to call your attention to it. Um, I'm, I'll, here, let me cancel out of this one and let's go to, uh, let's go to a portrait. This is an Adobe stock photo that I, I, uh, downloaded as a demo here. It uses a lot of the Adobe Sensei technology for, uh, for all the AI stuff, but look at smart portrait. It's got, um, it's got some, uh, some, uh what's it called? Uh, skin softening built into it. But when you go under smart portrait, I should say skin softening is under the, uh, the top one here. But when you go under smart portrait, look at this. So this is freaky. I'm going to click. This is a man smiling without teeth, right? You don't see the teeth, right? I assume he's got teeth. I'm going to turn this on the happiness filter and give it a second. It takes a little while because it even tells you this is processing in the cloud. And that's going to allude to where I think a lot of this stuff is going. But you got to see what this does first. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's crazy. It's creepy, but. It can be cool. Look at that. <laughs> He's smiling now. So I don't know. I, 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 it's not something I would use. I could see it being used for fun and not serious purposes, but who knows people, people can use this stuff for anything, but most of these things will work up in the cloud, which means it's less things to download. You don't have to wait for Photoshop to issue an update, right? As the AI learns and as the AI gets better, because it's being processed up in the cloud, that's automatically being applied to your photo. You don't have to wait for Adobe to issue a big full update and download a whole new version of Photoshop. Now you can take advantage of a lot of this stuff. Guys, just scroll through here. You can do. You can make a person look ma with makeup that didn't have makeup. You can colorize a black and white photo, photo restoration, face cleanup, again, skin smoothing. There's there's so much stuff in there that's, that's worth checking out. So... Um, you can have some fun with it. So I'm going to point you to a website here. So all I did to get here is I Googled what's new in Photoshop 2021. Okay. The uh, October 2020 release of Photoshop, but really 2021. And the, the Google search took me to Adobe's website where you can find out some other features. I just covered the photography features. There's things about pattern preview. There's things about smart objects. There's things about the pen tool and, um, and you know, vector things and, and all that stuff that aren't really photography related. So uh, if you want to, there's a little detailed feature summary right down there. If you want to find out more about the non-photography related stuff, this is a great place to go. But in the meantime, as far as the photography stuff goes, I think they uh, they gave us plenty to play with. And uh, hopefully this video helped out to get you at least introduced to it and, and moving along the line of where you can start to use some of this stuff.